L Word Generation Q Season 3 is coming out this year in 2022. The third season will contain 10 episodes and is being shot over the summer. We should expect it sometime towards the end of the year. And the first and second season have obviously come and gone already. Although there are some great moments and the cast are particularly amazing, there are some things I think that they can do in season three to improve the show even more. Now, there's always going to be things that people like and don't like, characters they like and don't like, couples they like and don't like, but I think this is more talking about the overall structure of the show, the focuses, storylines, and some possibilities of what I think, as an Elwood stan, they can do. We also left the season with some huge cliffhangers, which I think obviously a great decision because it keeps us all on our toes, excited and talking about the show. Now, the finale was probably my least favorite episode of season two because I feel as though there was a lot of stories over season two that I enjoyed and I felt as though they were all accumulating into something in the finale and it just kind of fell a little bit short. Although, of course, I really enjoyed all the cliffhangers. So I'm looking forward to finding out what happens and where do we go from here, because even clearing up the cliffhangers, obviously what happens for the rest of the season. So let's get into talking about season three of The L Word. Thanks so much for clicking on the video and we're going to get right into talking about season three. I'm gonna go through the characters mainly as pairs and talk about the couple and the, each individual character that's in the couple because most of the main cast is paired up with each other. So it's just easier to talk that way because also depending on what happens with the couple, whether they're together or not, will affect the storylines and character development. And then I'll talk about the other characters that aren't paired up just individually as well. So I'm gonna start out with Tess and Shane. And I know a lot of people were kind of worried about whether Jamie Clayton's coming back or not. And she is, like, there's, there's no worries there. I would be really interested to see if they still keep her as a, as a guest star because, I mean, she's in pretty much all the episodes and she's dating someone who's in the main cast, it seems as though that would be kind of an easy decision, but there could be way more factors that we're not privy to about like Jamie's time constraints and stuff. So she may still stay a guest star, but she is coming back no matter what. I think with Shane last season, I particularly enjoyed the, the poker and all of that kind of gambling element. As I've said, like just in a personal way I did that for a very long time that was my career and it was super interesting as I said you know happy to provide uh, any expertise and uh, timeline expertise as well if they'd be interested in that we'll talk more about that in a minute and I just feel as though this is one of the storylines that went nowhere it, it was not even really addressed in the second half of the season and I, I just thought that if they held this over the, the whole season and, and did more with it, it could have been a really cool, fun, interesting storyline. Like the Lena Way thing, I loved the first episode when they were setting that up and I thought it was going to be like, you know, Shane and Lena Way's character, like a little bit of a rivalry, but we never saw Eddie again. And I also kind of thought they might have gone down the route of Shane having some sort of gambling problem or things that were going on with the bar. So I would have liked something to have developed there, but it didn't it didn't really go anywhere. So if it if nothing's gonna happen, like there's so many little storylines like that that I always say on the channel, you know, the show only has 10 episodes. These are precious, precious minutes and wasting them on storylines that go nowhere, throw them out and just have a season long arc for each character, for the show as a whole and not write episode to episode. Like I, I really get the impression that 
the sh- and you know this could I'm not in the writers' room like I don't know obviously, and I feel as though this show writes episode to episode or a few episodes at a time. Obviously, I don't have the expertise and and don't run a writers' room, but it just would seem to me as though the best thing to do would be to say where where do we want to be in the last episode like i don't i'm not saying you have to write the last episode first but kind of arc out where you're going what you want to happen and then if you you know to take season 2 for example if you decide the first week you're writing okay we want to end with Tina on Beth's doorstep and Shane and Tess not knowing what's going on and and Alice on the plane with a ring or even just kind of the vague idea like we want a Beth and Tina cliffhanger of what's going to happen. You can go back and instead of in the first half of the season finale say have Shane and Alice saying would you you know what would you do if Tina turned up on your door you can go back to the premiere like how cool would that have been if they said that in the premiere and then it happens in the last episode that's cool but not not in the same episode so it's things like that that goes with the poker but there's there's a lot of other things where I understand that like you know not every story is going to go somewhere not every thing a character does is going to have some big deep meaning but I just would love some things like that. And I feel as though episode four kind of struck the balance well of having callbacks to the original show, but not making it so heavy handed that people who have never watched the original show wouldn't know what's going on. So I would love more of that. I know this is going off into to more than Shane and Tess, but that is something that I feel as though they need to be careful about because I feel as though this season there was too much Dana reference. Like, I love Dana. I think the the naming of the bar Danas was pure genius and that some of the other things they've done. But nostalgia for nostalgia's sake is, is not what you should be wasting precious minutes on in 10 episodes. So things like, was it cool that Sherry came back? Like, that was a cool reveal and stuff, but having this whole thing with Shane and Tess and, and, and like what was happening there, nothing either. And again, was involved in the poker, but didn't go anywhere. How cool would it have been if Sherry was really working with Eddie and like, do you know what I mean? Like there needs to be more cohesiveness instead of just, oh, having Sherry back because it's cool. I feel as though Shane is one of the characters that really hasn't gotten a super big storyline either so I feel as though that would have would have also accomplished the problem of like Shane not really having that much to do so I think you have kind of the groundwork laid with the poker thing you could have Shane trying to be a professional poker player or trying to start some like lesbian poker thing or what would be really cool is it in my opinion anyway is if you kind of had Shane starting like kind of a Molly Bloom situation because Shane's cool Shane knows loads of people she's not really starry-eyed over like celebrities and stuff so someone like Shane would be cool to have like an underground little poker scene you could bring in some awesome lesbian guest stars and they're part of like this underground poker league there really was like this celebrity underground game I know lots of people who played in it and as I said like I worked in the poker industry for a long time and stuff like this absolutely happens you have celebrities and you have super rich people like real estate rich art world rich Russian rich and these people basically like have 100k buy-ins and you know they're they're playing enormous stakes at super fancy hotels and Shane running one of these and as I said like it could start out as like a lesbian thing and then she could be bringing in other people and I mean I know this isn't like a show about poker and bars and stuff I'm not saying this has to turn into like a poker show but that is a cool storyline. And then you could also have Tess being like, 
I don't want to be involved with this, but then, you know, Tess is the dealer. They make enormous tips from games and it could be like they're in that together and then Eddie hears about it and, you know, that brings Lena Waithe back into the show. So that's my pitch. (laughs) So that's my pitch for Shane. And again, it's all about balance. It's obviously, it's not going to, you know, overtake the show, but it's, I think it's a cool storyline. I think it solves the problem then of bringing in like other cool guest stars. I know we have Alice's show as well, but this is just another cool way. And I think you could also use that to bring in some really cool people from the original show. And you could just have them like, Gabby DeVoe or someone pop up because they play poker and I mean the the coolest person to bring back in that way would be Helena you know it's been a long time we haven't heard anything about Helena she could be running some like mega poker league because she had all the background when she was playing with that Catherine woman and you know you could also bring in Tasha and other people that's how we originally met Tasha the poker game so Just my opinion. Okay, I'm gonna (laughs) talk about Sophie and Finley. (laughs) I actually really, really like Finley and I was super disappointed because we didn't get any backstory. I really thought we were gonna get stuff about Finley's family. So I would like Finley to come out of rehab having obviously like worked on herself and, you know, really done the work she needed to do and that will be a way to kind of bring in the stuff with the family the stuff with their background she could be telling Sophie like you know where all these issues came from and you could have Finley like over the season staying sober and we see her like going to meetings and then you also have obviously Tess that way too and if they want to bring Carrie back without Tina and they want Rosie on the show, this is a way you could bring her back. Like Carrie could be leading the meetings or something. I'm I think that she was supposed to be in Overeaters Anonymous. Like I I've made a video about how I don't think that they were that Carrie was lying because she doesn't seem like that sort of person. I think she just would have said if she was there for substance, but it seems so she was in overeaters. But they could have this thing that it's like, oh, we're putting all the queer, you know, anonymous groups together and you can figure something out to, for Carrie and Tess and Finley to be there. And then, you know, obviously you're using all those characters then. And we never really see stuff like this, like lesbians flourishing after going through a really you know, difficult time and going in for treatment and coming out better and brighter. Like Finley is a good person and she, she has an issue. Yes. But I would really like to see her overcoming it and dealing with it and kind of her life that way and how it affected her relationship. Maybe Sophie and her don't work or they do, or they work better with, without, this you know substance abuse so that's a whole thing you could tackle as well so that's the main thing I would like to see from their relationship and obviously from Sophie's side she's still working for Alice I would like to see more with Alice's show and I'll talk about that when I talk about Alice but I think that that's also how you utilize Sophie's character because the thing is with with this show like there is such a big cast so you have to have things like storylines that you're using multiple people because otherwise you just get this problem of like everybody only gets five minutes or whatever. Like even the stuff with Shane and the poker, Bet and R, Alice and her show, like all of those things got like tiny little bits last season because so many people had so many individual storylines And the only things that were like intersecting were the couples. And I still don't think that, you know, Danny and Gigi, to name one, got enough screen time. So by having the storylines be be bigger and broader and incorporating more characters into each individual one, then you can focus more time. I mean, if you had Carrie, Tess and Finley, and maybe it was bring spouses so you can bring Shane and Sophie in as well. That's five people. You can spend 15 minutes in an episode on that. 
And then if you have Alice and Sophie at the show and who Finley gets her job back, you can have them in there too. And then, you know, you have Bet and Pippa and Tina and whatever in, in another one. So incorporating all everybody into each other's storylines, I mean, it, again, I don't run a writer's room. <laughs> it's just my opinion, but it seems to me like the best solution for the precious minutes. So Micah and Mary Bell, I really feel as though they need to give, especially Micah, like he is a series regular. They need to give him like a really adequate storyline. And I feel as though they nearly got there when they incorporated him in to the therapy scene with Bet and Tina. And then they were he was working with Nat. Like it was so close and then it just went nowhere. So I I really think they they need to just give him something more to do because otherwise those episodes that he wasn't in and in the season finale he was in the intervention scene and that was it. Either don't have him as a main series regular or give him a real storyline. Obviously my preference is give him a real storyline because it it's just I feel as though the character's wasted otherwise and he has been kind of wasted last season because he stayed with Sophie and Finley and then he lost that like Danny friendship. So rebuild that this season and and Micah and Danny like air out their crap and really be like, okay, you know, Danny is not hurting over Sophie anymore. Clearly she's, <laughs> she's pretty set with Gigi. So now you see Micah come to Danny and be like, listen, I know I fucked up and blah, blah, blah. Like I want to be friends again and see why they were friends, why they were best friends. Like I haven't seen any reason to make me believe they were best friends or their relationship or anything like we've just been told I don't want to be told I want you to show me so show me why they're friends okay time for some genie time for some Danny and Gigi they need to get a hell of a lot more screen time that's for damn sure and I I they please do not fuck this up please do not fuck this up I think they have a shot here to be like historical making like you know people love them already they're really really popular and I mean I I love Gigi since since we saw her in the pilot so I've been sold on this since day one and I actually was calling for this before this was a thing way way back when they were filming season two I was like give me some genie and my wishes came true so I want way more screen time and I do not want their relationship to be drama. I want their relationship to literally be like the way Gigi is one of the best, I'm not even going to say gay, queer, whatever characters, Gigi is one of the best characters on tel- like they have done an amazing job with the character of Gigi like I love everything about her I love how she like so switched on she is and how she she's just a really healthy emotional person like she is like her mental health is just perfection and she's a great communicator everything I want Gigi bringing Danny up to that and not being you know this we saw Danny like struggling and even through her relationship with Gigi it seems that she's come on leaps and bounds and I want their relationship to be like the epitome of goals like they are perfect together and then if we need drama there's drama in other places so we have stuff like clearly all that you know Danny <laughs> literally hold off to jail we don't know what's happening we need to see Gigi coming to her rescue helping her and we know that Gigi absolutely will and she's there for Danny so I I think that a logical storyline is Danny having to make it in the world without her dad without his money without his power without his influence and we see Danny being like, what do I want to do? Because I'm going to bet as long as Danny has been aware of like 
jobs and careers and stuff, she's basically been told, oh, you're going to, you know, inherit my empire and you're going to be my prodigy. So I want Danny to be like, what does Danny want to do? What, what does she want to do in the world? How does she want to make the world a better place? And Danny going through that and Gigi helping her. And I mean, the, the really, they can go anywhere because Danny hasn't really exercised any prefer. It's not like she's been like, oh, if I didn't work for my dad, I would have been a doctor or something like that. Like they can really go anywhere with this. And I'd be super interested to see if they really wanted to get into like the political stuff again. Danny could be like, I want to run for office and Bet inspired me and blah, blah, blah. They need Bet and Danny to be friends again also. And I, I think that that is how you also create drama because the stuff's probably still going on with the dad. And I'm sure d- just being someone who also works <laughs> in their family business, it's messy as fuck. Everybody owns everything together. There's like shares and pieces and documents and signature. And, and there'll be some mess that has to be untangled from all this. And, you know, who knows what sort of finances Danny has set up. If she has some trust fund, there might be some stipulation. So that can be all the drama we need. And then we have Danny and Gigi just killing it in their couple together. So let's talk about Alice, one of my favorite characters. She's awesome. I also love the show, the love the idea that they had here of having Alice be this talk show host. I really enjoy the stuff that they did with the show, especially in the first season. And this was a a genius move. I really want them to do more stuff with the show again, even not like us physically having to be at the show, like when it's taping, but I mean, in the offices and things like that. I love that dynamic. And I really think as though they could do some cool stuff here with Alice. You guys know one of my YouTube besties, Evelyn Dar. we've talked about this a lot. And Evelyn and I were talking about how cool it would be if while Alice is like on her book tour, the network like hires someone else. You know, the way like people guest host for other shows when, when the host is like on vacation or something. And you could have her guest host be, I don't know, a YouTuber or some TikTok person. TikTok probably like because it it would be, they'd be really younger if they were TikTok. And you, and obviously it would be a lesbian and, you know, someone who has a social media following. So then you could have Alice return and it's like, oh, they didn't miss her. Her ratings actually went up and you know, the younger audience went up and they have all these other social media elements to the show. And we know, like, I know in the original show, it was like Alice had built Facebook, but we know Alice and the tech stuff like isn't quite there. And I can't imagine she's super social media savvy. So that would be a really interesting angle to be like this young person with a social media following and is so personal and interactive with their audience. I mean, a lot of YouTube and TikTok, like it's the fact that you share a lot of stuff and that your audience, you know, it's like your friends. It's not like celebrities that you don't know anything about their private live and stuff. I mean, I mean, like, look, like this video, like you're in my house. (laughs) So, and I think that would be so interesting too, to then have Alice, who's a very, you know, grew up in traditional media, got her star in traditional media, although the stuff with the chart and things. Yeah. But Alice having to come back and deal with this new generation and being, not replaced, but having to to deal with that. And then maybe the network are saying like, oh, we want her to host your shows on Fridays or we want her to have a segment on your show and to Alice having to deal with that. And even something, this is probably the actresses can relate to like, and any woman, like how aging and how women are treated when they age. And I would love to, to see something like that. So Alice and, and and again, I don't know whether Donald Faison's coming back. I'm, I, I, I mean, I think so. I, I think it would be kind of crazy if he didn't. But that would be a cool thing then too, because 
obviously Tom is in a very traditional media, like with books and stuff. So it would be interesting, like looking at all of that. And I think it would be such a cool concept on the show. And, you know, I will make myself available to do it. <laughs> so finally, <laughs> Ben Tina, oh God. I say this with all my love for them and also my exhaustion with them because they deserve each other like in a sweet loving way and also they fucking deserve each other <laughs> because they're such a nightmare that like they just have they they have to get back together like after all of this it's just everywhere I don't think we're gonna pick up and they're immediately back together I think it'll be you know the usual <laughs> Valentina saga. Obviously, I would like if they didn't just, you know, do the usual, oh, it's fixed and they're back together. Like, I want to see them working on it and communicating and all of this stuff. And then you enter the big problem that you have with Valentina, and that is obviously. Jennifer Beals is a series regular, executive producer, and the star of the show, and Laurel Holloman is a guest star and has an entirely separate career. Laurel Holloman, obviously, she has a separate career, like, she can't be, like, a famous artist and also be in the show every episode. I'm sure she'll be in about half again, the same with season two, and i I think there is a way you can do this. That obviously means that the character of Tina will only really be on the show for like the relationship because you can't have like Tina backstory and all that stuff and only be in five episodes. So Tina will kind of exist as a couple if you go this route that I'm, I'm going to describe because there's there's just not enough time and I know people suggest things all the time like oh they just film you know all her scenes together and and th these things just aren't possible like they would need an entire separate budget and entire separate staff to do all that it, it it you just can't do it and there's you know other people who are saying oh well sideline bet right bet off the show and I don't like that and one as a bet stand like she's my favorite character but also I think people forget that when this show originally came out way way back in 2003 this show probably wouldn't exist without Jennifer Beals and I don't talk about the actors and stuff like that but I'm going to make an exception here because the show honestly wouldn't exist without her. She took an enormous, enormous risk being in this show. When this show came out, people were saying, will she ever be able to get another job again? And I think now in 2022, when, you know, Don't Ask, Don't Tell is gone and there's legal gay marriage in a lot of places, including, you know, the US and most of Europe, that we forget what it was like not even 20 years ago. So it is clear that Jennifer Beals loves the show, loves the community, she loves being on it, she's an executive producer. It would be different if she was saying herself like she didn't want to be on it or she only wanted to be a guest star, but it's clear that she's here, she's here for the long haul and she wants to be the main star and the executive producer. So I don't think that's something that she wants. So, that, you know, I'm not for that. I think that there's ways that you can be clever and figure it out to have Bet on the show more than Tina. And that is to have some other storyline that ties Bet up. I think the art world thing, nothing really happened. I mean, we got like obviously Bet and Pippa, but I feel as though... I, I've said this a few times, like with last season, did I love Bet and Gigi? Absolutely. But I feel as though they should have brought Pippa in earlier and got to know that character rather than just bringing Pippa in to be in a relationship with Bet. Like I would have liked to have known Pippa as a rounded out character as well, instead of just like the few little things they gave us about her to like check, check a box with like her having a kid and stuff. So the art world thing also I constant like I mean you guys know I talk to a lot of people who watch the show and no one says to me oh I love the art world stuff like everyone complains about it 
So I think that there's something better you can do. And I have an idea that, that maybe would work for something really interesting, for something that you could have Tina involved in a bit, but like also not, it wouldn't be super obvious that she's not there and you wouldn't have to constantly be like, I'm going to Skype Tina or Tina's in the other room. So that idea, let's talk about that. And you can tell me if it's crazy or not. So I think that you need to create a secondary storyline for Bet that also ties in to the family and Tina, but it doesn't involve Tina, if that makes sense. I mean, there's obviously going to have to be a little bit of gimmick work and a little bit of the occasional, oh, Tina's filming something somewhere else. I mean, it is good that she has this kind of job that it's it's not like she's an accountant or a lawyer that works in an office, like she's away at film sets and it, it would get annoying if it's like every episode she's away. But if you really sit down, you I'm sure these people are smart, like they can figure out a way to make it believable. And by the secondary storyline, I mean something like, and this is another idea that Evelyn was mentioning when we were talking about our, you know, what we thought should happen for season three. So a good example of this would be if Angie has some sort of storyline that it pulls her parents into a little bit or it gives them something to fixate on that's not their relationship and the art world which nobody's interested in. Like I don't know if Angie was pulled into some sort of cult or some sort of you know person that has a following. I know that sounds like quite out there for the L word but it doesn't have to be like crazy over the top. If you are talking about someone that not quite like Elizabeth Holmes, Adam Newman, where it's there that way, like the face of a company and it's like in the company, it's that way. But it could be someone in more of like a Tony Robbins sort of way that they're this new, like big charismatic person who wants to bring in like younger people into like a positive thinking, you know, we are the world, all of that stuff. And you could have Angie introduced through Geordie, who we know her parents are very checked out and they kind of leave her to her own devices. And someone like Geordie would usually be looking for some sort of belonging to a group or something and she could be brought in that way. And then that's a way that Angie could be introduced into it. And she could be like, I don't want to go to college and I want to, you know, go and they'll have some sort of, you know, like Scientologists have their thing. People always have the thing, like they go and do charity work or something, but Bet and Tina could be worried about it. And I'm sure there's some people are like, this this is really out there. But what I want is really good, cohesive storylines that are interesting, even if they all weren't gay, like that yes, that's an important factor in this show. But the other thing is that I really want them to have fun and to just have a good time again. And that falls into the whole thing with Bet and Tina too. Like I want, as I said, I want them to communicate effectively. I want to see all that and not just like put a bandage on it and be like, oh, okay, we're back together. Everything's fine. Because They've done that so many times and that's why they're not together now because they need to like address all these things. Like when they got back together in season five, they had like one conversation in an elevator and then that was it. So I want to see them going through all of this, but I also like, I would like this to happen early in the season so that we can have some fun because episode nine when we finally got Shane, Alice, Bet and Tina together like for a minute it was like we're back yay like I just loved those aspects of that episode and I really want that for season three and of course you guys know I will never do a video about my hopes and dreams for the L word and leave out a cohesive timeline like it's the little thing (laughs) it's the little things so I would love all this stuff to happen I'd love you know similar things like I said I think these these are smart people they can they can figure it out they know what they're doing and I really hope that they 
now in pre-production before anything's done that they're sitting down and they're like where do we want to be at the end of season three like what do we want to be leaving people with like where do we want to leave each character and I think if you start there and work your way back that's how you create these great overarching storylines and everything falls in neatly and when you have this oh this is where this character is going for a season then you can put in all these little I I don't want to say fillery bits but you know those things that just are it, it contained in an episode or like a random hookup or something like that and if you know like oh okay I'm just you know making this up but say the the end of season three is okay we want to leave people in the finale of season three with Danny and Gigi engaged or proposing or whatever that way you can work your way back over the whole season and be like oh okay if we if we want them proposing in season three then we need to you know have Danny meet Gigi's kids and we need Danny to be sorted out with with what's going on with her family and maybe have them moving in together and you have all these things that you can you 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 can have a timeline (laughs) you can say okay season Three, the first episode is starting just for easy to sake January 1st and we know the season finale is going to be December 31st so you know if they're going to get engaged here we should probably have them move in together in summer and you can then have the timeline and not have two April 9th <laughs> so you know I say this all all from a place of love you know that I love the show and I I say all of this with love. I just want this show to be the best show it can possibly be. And I'm sure the second that I put this up, I'll think of a million other things that, that I should have said. But for the most part, those are the general, I mean, the overarching things when I'm talking about like timeline and like, you know, season arcs. Those are the things I want and, you know, I I hope, I hope that, that we get at least some of them. So let me know what you want to see in season three. I have a feeling I know what the two top answers <laughs> will be. So let me know down below. And of course, follow me on all of my social media. Check out my merch store. Check out my second channel as next month in March, I'm going to be covering The Dropout and We Crashed over there because that channel talks more about cults and scams and things like that fraud so check that out everything is listed in the description box down below my merch store patreon social media second channel podcast and i also go live on mondays so make sure to pop over if you can and as always make sure to stay safe take care of yourselves and i'll see you in the next one bye guys